Hey everyone, Dr. B here. Welcome back to another video tutorial. And today we're going to show you how to make these four Disney birdhouses entirely from scratch. Uh, before we get started, let's get into the tools you'll need. Uh, first on the list, biggest thing is your miter saw. You can use either a miter saw, a table saw, or a skill saw, but a miter is probably the best tool uh, to use because you'll be going between different angle cuts um, a lot through this project. Uh, next thing on the list is your impact and your drill. You could probably get away with just using your drill in this project because you'll only be uh, driving two, one small screw and one small nail, so you don't really need your impact for this. Uh, next thing on the list is your scroll saw. This will be used for the ears and the bows for the Mickey and Minnie, and also the, uh, the bows for Daisy and Donald, but um, definitely need a scroll saw. Next thing on the list is a brad nailer. Uh, use one inch brad nails, uh, 18 gauge if you can and you'll be using a lot of nails around this project so very comes in handy uh, painters tape and paint brushes uh, one inch uh, exterior screws and one inch finish nails uh, you want a tape measure and a one and a half inch hole saw and depending on the type of bird you want to attract you want to go either bigger or smaller but you'll definitely need a hole saw to make those holes also a uh, wood glue and sandy block are good things to have a 45 degree uh, square and a pencil with an eraser and finally you'll want a 5 16th and 1 16th drill bit with a dowel 5 16th and a uh, mallet hammer to tap that in and finally for those of you on a uh, computer you can go ahead and screenshot this and print it out or if you're on mobile device you can go ahead and take a pencil and paper and jot all these things down this is the entire list that you'll need and next we have a list that you'll want to print out as well of all the different uh, paints that you'll be using. And in the red there, I uh, labeled what they'll be used for. And you can get away with uh, using 8-ounce tubs. Uh, you don't have to get like gallon sizes depending on how many you know, houses you're going to make. So if you get the 8-ounce tubs, they're like $3 a piece at Home Depot. So this whole project uh, in paint will be less than $30. And finally, we're going to go into the blueprints. So you're going to want to go ahead and... Uh, Take a screenshot and print these out because the I can't give you a URL to where these uh, blueprints are hosted because these are my actual own blueprints here. I made all the dimensions myself, the, my own design. So this is the only place where you're going to be able to find this. So go ahead and take a screenshot and print them out for your, your records, for your, um, your instructions and everything for this project. But to go over the uh, blueprints really quick, uh, from the top left to the right, we have... Uh, the start with the uh, dowel perch, so that's obviously where your uh, birds are going to be landing on to get into the birdhouse. You'll want that uh, perch cut at about a two inch length. Uh, you can go two and a half, one and a half, um, kind of play with it, but I noticed two inches is about perfect. Uh, five sixteenths inch uh, is the, the width of the dowel. You can play with that as well, but I found that five sixteenths kind of looks the best and uh, it's also as far as durability goes, it, it works out pretty good. To the right of that, we have three different boards. We have a seven and a half inch, a seven inch, and a six and a quarter inch board. So you'll have your seven and a half inch base. That's obviously the bottom of the birdhouse. And then you'll have your seven inch and six and a quarter inch roof, A and B. And those will butt up against each other. So that's why one is a little bit shorter, three uh, quarters of an inch. That's actually the width of the board. So you'll deduct that. And uh, when they butt up against each other, they'll be nice and even on both sides. And uh, at the very top right there, you see it's six inches wide. In parentheses, it says five and a quarter inches. That means basically, you know, you buy a board at the store that says six inches. It's actually anywhere between five and a quarter and five and a half. Every board's a little bit different. So you want to make sure when you're doing this project that all of your boards are the exact same width. Uh, but bottom left here, we have the front and back, uh, the two different cuts. Uh, from top, from the very peak to the base, it's 10 inches and you'll want to cut those sides at a 45 degree angle. And on the bottom left there, you see the front, um, that hole is one and a half inch again, and your dowel hole is uh, 5 16 And finally at the bottom right, you have your side walls. These are your two vertical pieces that connect to the base of the birdhouse and also hold up your uh, roof. You want those cut at eight and a quarter inches. You want two of them again. And at the very top, you'll want 45 degree angles and make sure that these pieces are almost perfect because if uh, they're off just a little bit then it'll throw off the dimensions of the rest of your birdhouses uh, and you'll see gaps everywhere that you'll need to eventually correct so make sure that those pieces are perfect 
And before we get into the assembly and all that fun stuff, just want to talk about the wood here. And don't mind my hand movements, I was talking about something a little bit different, but I had this video clip that's perfect because it shows the, the boards in the background there. But I just want to talk about those really quick. So if you are building indoors, don't worry about, you know, whatever kind of wood you can come up with, whatever kind of wood you want to use. Uh, you can use, you know, oak, mahogany, whatever, because you're not going to be susceptible to any kind of, uh, you know, bad weather. So if you're indoors, you use whatever you want. But if you're outdoors, uh, you want to use some kind of rot resistant wood. And if you're buying your wood from Home Depot or Menards or wherever, Lowe's, et cetera, um, they're going to have two different main kind of rot resistant boards. And that is pine and cedar. Cedar is very expensive compared to pine. Um, and between those, there's uh, pine select or there's um, board select and then there's board uh, common, common board. Common board is you're going to see those knots and, you know, some chipping will be a little bit wavy sometimes. Basically, your cheaper boards and then your select, your, your very nice looking boards with less knots and very straight cuts and everything like that. But so that board right there, that those are uh, pine common and those are like four, 450 a board. If those are pine select, they'd be about $10 a board. And if they were cedar, they'd be upwards of $20, $25 a board. So it's if you do the math if you're making a lot of houses you might as well use uh, pine common unless you have somebody that you're building a house for that wants a specific kind and you're gonna you know upcharge the the wood price or whatever but basically if you're making these for yourself and whatever you're gonna be painting them anyway so you might as well use you know uh, pine common so that's what we used cheap way to go one birdhouse is about five dollars in wood and backs cut up at 45s. We're gonna go ahead and take one board from each of the set. And we're gonna take our uh, right angle here and go down the center there. Make another line there. And that'll be your center point. That's where you're gonna drill down and basically we're gonna be you know, right around here or so for the, the hole itself. And then from there, you can go down as far as you want. I usually go about right here for the perch. So we're gonna go ahead, go ahead and find the center point here as best we can. And there we go. Now we're gonna go ahead and sand this down. The back, it's gonna be a little bit chippy, so you'll want that uh, uh, back piece to be inside your house so that way you don't see any of that. So now we're going to go ahead and drill the hole for the perch. And again, we're using 5 sixteenths. see if your dowel lines up and once we go to install this we're not going to put this in yet because uh, we want to paint still so now that those are all done you're going to go ahead and take your back side and do that angle cut that I was talking about either 20 or 45 basically you want your good piece your good showing piece on the outside and then you're going to cut that at an angle so whatever your back side your better looking side basically you want that cut so we're gonna go ahead and set our miter not this part but this part over here we're gonna set that to let's go 25 degrees again you can kind of experiment with that how much you want the box to actually open up but you don't really have to measure it uh, you basically kind of come down I don't know if you can see this on camera or not but the laser pointer will actually overlap a piece of wood and show you the, what your final product is gonna look like. So basically you kind of just wanna take a sliver off. You don't wanna to take too much off like that, obviously. You wanna just basically go to one point. So that way one point 
will be flush with the wood with your finished product, but uh, the you'll still have your angle in order for your wood to move, which we'll show you kind of what we mean later on, but go ahead and make your cut. And that's what it's gonna look like. <clears throat> so basically that's gonna be the back of the house. So you'll see a little bit of a gap here, which is okay. But once you go to actually open up your house, the other part, which this isn't the part that will be attached to, but basically your house will be able to go like that. If that makes any sense. So that's what that's for. So now that we have all of our cuts made and kind of where they need to be, uh, it's time to start to assemble. But before you assemble, you want to line up your pieces just to make sure that they're exactly where they need to be before uh, you, you glue anything down or tack anything down. Uh, that way you can make an adjustments if you need to. So here we have one already started. We have our base plate down and our two uprights and our other upright for our, our roof here. We want to make sure that that's perfect, that that's lined up or else there'll be some overlapping. And you'll see kind of like over in my other house over here where there's a gap. So if you're not lined up, you're going to see that gap there. And that's not good. So you want to make sure everything's lined up perfectly. And, you know, since we're not, we didn't joint or uh, plane any of this wood, there's a good chance it might be off just a little bit. Looks like we're flush here at the top. So we're going to go ahead, get the brand nailer out and start tacking. So first thing first, we'll go ahead and screw our pilot hole here for the screw. And then we'll screw a smaller one here for the pivot point. So they're two different size bits that I'll be using. Just make sure that they're smaller than what you're working with because you don't want, you want to be able to screw in and not just slide right back in and out. So make sure you're flush on all sides here before you make your drill. Try to go as center as you can. And this is just for the bottom plate. We're not going to glue this part down, obviously, because this needs to lift up. And there you go. Don't try to tighten it too much. Just, to, just enough to get it in there. And then we're going to go ahead and create our pivot point. Since we're working with a pretty small nail here, we're going to use a 5 uh, drill bit. And drill as center as you can. And you can always test it too, just to see. And actually, it looks like it was a little bit too big of a bit, but that's okay. So that's just going to be your pivot point anyway. And it looks like I left myself just a little enough room to tap it in, but again, that's going to be the pivot point. But I uh, use a little bit smaller for the nail I just used. I'm going to use a little bit smaller of a bit next time. Now that we're getting ready to brad nail, uh, we're going to be using 18 gauge, uh, one and a quarter inch, uh, depending on your brad nailer. Depends on the type of uh, nails that you'll be using. So that's kind of what they look like. We don't want to use anything too long because there's a good chance that it might split on us. That's more than enough. If you wonder what kind of brand nails your machine takes, I'll tell you right here on the side usually. If not, then look at your owner's manual or even look up online. And I'll tell you exactly uh, what piece that you want to, or what size that you want to use. So if you're going to glue down your project, now would be the time to do it. I'm going to skip that process and just use the brand nailer. So you're going to go ahead and make sure that you're uh, lined up at least at one point and then once you get it down you can kind of uh, It'll be a little bit more snug for you so you can Adjust the bottom part. So just get one. I'm gonna put probably two one right here and one right here above the screw and again, make sure that you're all lined up and Hit the center of it as best as you can because you don't want to go off the side because it's a real big pain to take these things back out once you, if, you, if, I, if I were to miss there, it'd go through the side. It's a real big pain to get that back out. So make sure you're lined up. So now we're going to go ahead and put the other one in. 
at the bottom here uh, to make sure that you're flush again. And whatever you do, if you've never used a brand nailer before, uh, make sure that your hand's not where this nail might go if you were to miss because it's going to end up in your hand. So you don't want to do that. So now you line up your other side and do the same thing. Make sure you're flush. So now we're ready to put on the uh, roof here. Just make sure that your longer piece is the top piece. So basically make the smaller piece flush with the roof itself and then the longer piece will overlap. And again you can always double check just to make sure uh, both sides there that we're even. And make sure again we're flush on both sides before you brand nail anything down. So this is what we uh, came up with, all said and done. Got everything brand nailed and everything. Um, if I were to use a little bit of wood glue there, I, you wouldn't see those hairline cracks. I mean, you could barely even see that on camera, but um, if I were to use wood glue, it would have tightened that up and uh, made it more seamless. All right, before we go ahead and put the primer on, I have a little tip uh, that I picked up from an old man a while ago. If you ever have any like hairline cracks like this that you want to get rid of, there's an actually easy way of doing that. Basically, you take some wood glue and uh, take some sawdust, as we have here. I'll paint it down really quick. You basically make a paste. So you just kind of take your wood glue, make a paste like that. Just kind of wish it around a little bit. And then what we're going to do fill these cracks in and then use like a putty knife to remove any access that you might have and then after that you sand it down really good and since we're using latex for this project it'll work out really nicely but if you're going to be using some kind of stain like if you have a stain project uh, you really really want to sand this down because that stain will not stain the same color as the wood it'll stick out like a sore thumb so just keep that in mind for any future projects that you might do now we got lucky uh, most of the boxes didn't have uh, any cracks whatsoever but this one lined up a little funky on us so we didn't have to do too much but basically just take your putty knife remove any excess that you might have and as you can see, there's still a couple spots that have a little bit of a crack, so you just use that, kind of fill it back in. Do that really good. And again, you're going to want to sand it down. And it's always good to kind of just sand it like right afterwards, because any dust that you might get up will help fill that in a bit. It's as simple as that pretty much. Do a little bit more sanding, but as you can tell, the lines pretty much disappeared. And once we have our latex over that, you're not going to see that line at all. All right, now that we fill in our hairline cracks with our wood glue and finished sanding everything down nice and smooth, getting ready for painting, I'm not going to show you this part of me um, hitting it with primer because this video is probably already too long. It's kind of self-explanatory. Basically, just uh, make sure you don't glop it on and make sure it's nice and smooth. Uh, we'll be using Kills Premium Indoor Outdoor Paint. Uh, that'll be their primer that we'll be using. But really quick, just wanted to show you guys. I have this house turned over on its side. You want to put a five pattern of holes, and this will be for drainage. simple as that basically that's to let any water out that might get inside because um, if you have standing water anywhere it has a tendency to create pathogens and diseases and things of that nature and uh, if water were to get in through the hole here it needs somewhere to go so that's what those are for you can use a little bit bigger bed if you want to but basically as long as there's air circulation and flow and uh, a place for the water to drip out that's pretty much all you need and uh, we won't be painting the bottom either. You, you can sand it if you want to. It's not really necessary because this will be the bottom of where you're mounting it. At least what where I'll be mounting mine. So you'll never see the bottom anyway.
So I've already traced these out, as you can see. I use this paint can, perfect size. Basically just uh, self-explanatory. It's kind of trace them out on a piece of wood. You'll need four total. Two for Minnie, two for Mickey. And then also for the bows, I have two different sizes that are printed out here just to kind of see what I wanted. Uh, I'll be using the bigger ones. So kind of self-explanatory here. You just cut these out and use these as templates. I'll be putting the, this piece of wood and then after that, just hit it on the uh, scroll saw. All right, so we have everything all primed up, all of our ears and uh, our bows here. So for the ears, what you're gonna do is basically just take one and kind of line up where you want it to be. I chose uh, six centimeters down, so what I did is I made a line here. So when I go to glue it down, I know exactly where I need to be on both sides. And again, I did that for the Mini and Mickey. And for the bottom part, so the um, Mickey and Mini will be black tops and then red and then pink. And for the Donald and Daisy, the top parts will be all white and then the bottoms will be pink and uh, blue. So what we did here is when you go to uh, tape up your lines to make sure that you're even all the way around your house, you basically just take a ruler and preferably use centimeters, millimeters to really get on point. So I'm just a hair under uh, 12 centimeters all the way around. And as you're taping, you basically just make sure you're all the way around even so that way you have a straight line. So that's what we did there. So now going on to uh, paint. All right, now that Mickey and Minnie are over there drying, we're gonna go ahead and start on Donald and Daisy. Um, just really quick, the paint that you're gonna wanna use for the top is a base white. It just doesn't have a label on it, just a base white. And for the Mickey and Minnie, it's a base black. Um, for the bottom halves of Donald and Daisy, for Donald, you're gonna use a brilliant blue. And for Daisy, you're gonna use Put the focus in there, it's a lavender sky. And we went ahead and taped the bottoms because the bottoms will be feet, so those will be like orangish yellow. All right, now that Daisy and Donald are both drying, uh, second coat for the base there, we're gonna go ahead and paint uh, Mickey and Minnie. And for Mickey, we're gonna use, see if I can zoom in for you, uh, the deco red. And you're also gonna use this for the bow for uh, Donald. And for the base for Minnie, we're gonna use It's a Girl, if you could see that. All right, and here we are, all said and done. This is kind of what you guys are gonna expect using uh, my method here. Uh, obviously, you can change whatever you want to make it your own liking, but a couple things I did do wrong here, and I'm gonna admit it was kind of out of laziness, but I didn't measure my, uh, my dots here, as you can kind of tell that it's not lined up at all. <laughs> and completely out of laziness there. I, kind of long story short, I know this is no 
um, excuse, but I made these houses already before. I shot the video and it spent about 25 hours, honestly, between making uh, the birdhouses, uh, the first set, and then painting, and then editing the video, doing a voiceover. And when I went to go upload the video, I, uh, I, so I finalized the video and I ended up uh, just uploading it and I deleted all my footage. And when I went to go finalize it on YouTube, you know, editing the title, description, and all that stuff, I noticed my video was only four minutes long and it was actually like a 20 minute video. And so I basically only had the last part of the video, so I had to basically do the whole video all over again. So I made four more houses. So actually, I have uh, a whole nother set of these that. And honestly, I think uh, I look a little bit better, but um, but yeah. So I, I I think my bows turned out better this time, but I definitely messed up on the uh, circles there. So um, the dots on uh, Minnie's pattern. So if you were to do this, obviously just kind of measure. Um, you basically just measure from uh, you know from the outside edge, and then put one there, and then. Out measure the same on the outside edge and then put one there and then that way you know where your other dots are going to go and if you even have enough room to put everything. I uh, should have did that but I was just like so eager to get this video done to move on to the next project and I've already spent you know over 40 hours making birdhouses and I've got a lot of a lot of stuff to do. It's uh, you know, spring outside I have a bunch of gardening I need to attend to and um, things are just kind of piling, piling up on my honey to do list so uh, I just kind of had to rush through the last part, so that's why that looks like that. If I would have took my time, it would look a lot better. And also, early on in the project, I'd even think, you know, I did kind of explain uh, right here. As you can see that there was a knot in the wood where a branch, you know, grew, and there's a little hole. So if I were to fix that, wanted to fix that, I would just use sawdust, uh, glue sawdust, sand it down, paint over it. Um, but you know, it's just a birdhouse to me, so I'm not going to put that much more time and effort into it. Basically, I just want to kind of show you guys the uh, the designs that I came up with, and you know, uh, you guys can critique it how you want. But, um, but yeah, so that's the importance of always making sure that your uh, the the pretty side of the board is facing outwards, where you're going to see your project at. And so, if you don't, that's what you're going to end up with. So, just an important note. But yeah, so. Uh, hopefully this video guys helped you out and you know give you some ideas as to how you want to make yours and paint them up or whatever um, again things turned out okay I think so if you have any suggestions on uh, future videos I'd love to hear them and uh, again I hope this video guys this video helped you guys out and uh, looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with yourselves so till next time till next video as always keep it green peace out guys